Hey folks, this is Matt once again, coming back with another video. This is of a film I recently saw. I don't own the film, but a friend of mine uh, had a copy of it, so I saw it because of him. And it's a film called Hotel Inferno, which came out, I think, 2013. And first off, before I get into it, the best way to start this off is go down in the info box and click on the trailer and watch the trailer before you see this review. I really do mean it. Click on the trailer right down there, click on it, watch it, and then watch this review because that's the best way to go into this. <laughs> it's knowing what this movie is. By it's a first person point of view, not found footage. It's a first person point of view film like a video game, only in live action, and it's a splatter movie. And the long story short is here, uh, it's not a game, it's a movie. I was going to say, you play as an assassin, like a hitman, is hired to do a job, something happens, and he has to get out of this hotel, and all these people come on the woodwork, kind of zombies but they kind of remind me more of deadites from the evil dead films they kind of remind me of deadites to a point and he's trying to get out to get back to his wife who is at home somewhere and you pretty much only hear three voices throughout the film you hear the main guy's voice you hear this guy who is sort of our main bad guy who is talking to him by spe speakers or something and then once in a while he calls home and he talks to his wife and that's pretty much the gist of it it's a very short film it's like an hour and 17 minute film I will say this for the film if you watch the trailer and it interests you if you're a fan of the idea, which I am a fan of the idea, of a first-person perspective movie that's not found footage, uh, kind of like uh, that scene, and I know a lot of people are going to be mad at me for mentioning this movie, but Doom, the movie Doom, that f scene, which I do enjoy that scene, and I'll admit I enjoy that movie. I don't care. <laughs> it's my opinion. Uh... If the idea is interesting to you, like it was interesting to me, if the trailer it piques your interest, and you like splatter movies, a lot of gory practical movies in the vein of like early Peter Jackson, Bad Taste, Dead Alive stuff, it's worth one watch. It's worth one watch. Would I ever buy it? <clears throat> Not for the price they're asking. You, it's one of those films that. Uh, again, I saw it because of a friend of mine, but in order to buy it, you pretty much have to buy it from their website. I think it's like f either f f bare bones, it's like 15, I don't even think it's dollars, it's like pounds. But if you want the other one, which if I had a pick, I would get the other one because it has the soundtrack, and the soundtrack is one of the best parts of the movie. Uh, but... I think that's like 15, 20 pounds, and that's way too expensive. I mean, I wouldn't pay that much money for it. Like, I'm glad I saw it, but I think part of it is I didn't pay, I didn't pay for it. I saw it because of a friend of mine. <coughs> and, uh, but, uh, it's worth one watch. Although, I don't know how anyone else is going to watch it unless they buy the movie. Uh, But at the same time, I don't know if I would ever see myself watching this film again. I do think it's a film, like when people ask me what's a film that would be good for a remake, I would say this would be one of them. The reason I say it's worth a watch because there's good things and bad things. Like, I don't really give star ratings, but if I gave it like out of five stars, it would be like maybe a three star or something like that. It's because... I really like the idea behind the film, <clears throat> being completely point of view from a person's eyes, which I think more films should do that. Because that's the thing about found footage movies, is A, they always have the same ending, and B, 
well, 99% of them have the same ending, and B, you're always wondering, why the fuck don't they just drop the camera? Drop the camera and run. Uh, the camera's gonna run out of film. You gotta change film. Worry about the film. Worry about the camera. Worry about how, well, how the fuck is the camera surviving? And why are they recording this? And why don't they just run? <clears throat> First person perspective, you don't have to worry about that. So I don't know why more movies don't do that. You get the same idea of a found footage movie, but it makes more logical sense in your brain. It does, because it's like, <coughs> you're not thinking, drop the fucking camera. So I like the idea behind the film. It is a shitload of gore. If you think the Evil Dead remake has gore, as the goriest movie of the past, in 2013... This film beats the Evil Dead remake tenfold. This, fi this film is ten times gorier than the Evil Dead remake. It has heads being smashed in, heads being decapitated, someone's punch, the lead guy's punching one, and their face is breaking off, bodies exploding, guts coming out. This is literally one of the goriest films I've seen. In quite a few years. And it's a lot of practical. For the budget that they had. It's a lot of practical work. And maybe a little bit. A mixture of CGI. But. <clears throat> just for. But. To be honest. I didn't notice a lot of it. <clears throat> Most of it. All what I saw was practical. And it's a shitload of practical. And it's for the low, low budget they had. The, whoever does the special effects on this, and I, I know these guys have other films. I've seen trailers to their other films. They should hire these guys for special effects. And with the low budgets that they have, hire these guys for special effects on big movies. When people say big movies, oh, they don't have the money and and bullshit. You do have these guys have no money. Get them to do your practical effects. Because, I mean, there's some crazy shit. I mean, it's like Peter Jackson type shit. And, uh, the action scenes and the soundtrack are the other positive points I'll get to the film. The physical action scenes, like, for example, there's uh, one that comes at the lead guy. Like, the first time the lead guy gets into a fight. It's, a, you know, it's all point of view from beginning to the end. It reminded me, I didn't play the game, but I saw playthroughs of this game, Condemned Criminal Origins. So you had, like, a, you're a guy with, like, a pipe. And so, like, you just have the guy, like, blocking with a pipe and, you know, beating the guy up. Or there's a scene where he gets this electricity and he's trying, you know, because he's a hitman, so he knows how to do some stuff. And he hot wires it and is... <clears throat> I, I, Deadites is, like, the best way to call these things for me. Is he gets the electricity, gets a press it to the guy's head, and boom, little explosion. Uh, one comes at him with a chainsaw, he's able to get away, <clears throat> get it away from it, and use the chainsaw like across the, the face, you know, punching one and like punching his head in, tying one to a tree, and the, the thing tries to get out and cuts his own head off. Uh, Especially a scene where he gets a shotgun and you kind of like a first person shooter game. Using a shotgun, boom, blowing heads up, blowing faces off, literally blowing faces off, boom, boom. Uh, and if you're wondering, well, Matt, you know, you see, oh, and then the other thing I really like is the soundtrack. The soundtrack, I think, is great. I would love to own the soundtrack by itself. <laughs> I don't know if I want to pay. I think it's again. I think it's in pounds, not dollars. So twenty to get the soundtrack version. Like get the movie with the soundtrack. That's probably be like twenty five bucks. I don't know if I want to pay that much just for a soundtrack. I don't know. Me, I'm a cheapskate shithead. But the soundtrack is really damn good. It, it reminds me of. Like when I was watching Dread and I'm listening to the score to Dread, it reminded me of John Carpenter vibe. This is the same thing. It had a Carpenter vibe or it had like an 80s vibe to it. Sometimes it had Carpenter, but sometimes it had like an just an 80s vibe to the soundtrack. I thought the soundtrack was a big plus for the film. 
huge plus for the film. Again, I would gladly get the soundtrack by itself. Um, they don't sell the soundtrack by itself, but uh, so I've been saying a lot of positive. <coughs> You're probably wondering, well, Matt, you seem unsure about the movie. Why are you, if it's you never do star ratings, but why would you give out a? a I was thinking either a two and a half or a three. Why are you giving it more? Because there's a lot of stuff that sucks in the movie, too. Uh, the main three are the script. Well, actually, that's the... the Honestly, that's... A, when you go into a film like this, you don't, you really don't give a shit about the script. But it's still a problem, which I'll get to. That's the lesser of the three evils. The main two for me... The ending, I thought sucked. I thought it was lame. I thought it was weak-ass sauce. I thought for all the shit that was going on before... It was a lame, limp dick. That's what it was. It was a, it got a big fat boner through a bit of it, and now it became a flaccid, limp dick. And it spluttered and splittered and sputtered. And now I'll get to what what I mean by that. The second thing is the voice acting. Even though there's three voices, they really do suck. Now I think these guys are Necrostorm are from overseas, so. Some some people may say, well, yeah, they're bad because it's like voice acting in a video game. Voice acting in a video game is bad. I've seen voice acting in video games that are good, too. And to be honest, that's not something you should copy from video game first-person shooters. You really shouldn't. <coughs> uh, the lead guy, for example, he the voice that they have him, it sounds like a fucking... For some reason, it reminds me of a fucking Russian Jason Statham. Like a piss-poor, cheap Russian version of Jason, Jason Statham. How are you doing? I can't even do it right. And then half his fucking dialogue... No, probably 80% of his dialogue is like, Fuck you! Oh, yeah, yeah, fuck yourself, you fuck you! Or it's no 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 it's either no 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 or fuck you or fuck you and then fuck you fuck you fuck you I like fuck yous I love curses in movies but it's just like get to a point where like really at least come up with other curse words thankfully this you only hear this voice like three times, but when he talks to his lady on the phone, the lady on the phone who's playing his wife is horrendous. She has no idea on how to inflect emotional tone to make you believe that she, this woman actually gives a shit on what she's saying. It's like, what are you doing? Talking to me. <laughs> what the I can't even do it justice. I can't even do it a piss poor justice. It's just, this is the best reading you got. I mean, no disrespect, but this is the best reading you got. It's literally like, hey, I'm reading from my cue card, even though you can't see me. I don't know. I mean, and then the guy you hear the this, in the speakers, for some reason he remind me of uh, the Metal Gear Solid game. I yeah, know what game. The villain, Liquid Snake. Which I know, I think that's the same guy who was Leonardo in the 80's Ninja Turtle cartoon. But I'm not talking about that voice. The voice he does for... It's not the same guy who does the voice, I'm not saying that, but... The villain of Liquid Snake and Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation 1. For some reason, that voice kind of reminded me of this voice at times. Uh, and it's not the same actor, it's just that voice. For, just in, in my ears. All voice acting sucked in this. <coughs> You're like, really? That's what I mean. You could remake this film and get better actors. Even if it's just in voices. Hell, Michael Bean, he voiced a video game. Far Cry 3, Blood Dragons, or something like that. Get him to voice something like this. Get him, someone else to voice something like this. The second thing, which, really, that's the, the main thing I have a problem with is the second thing, is the ending. Because throughout the film, well, actually, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to the third thing. But pretty much the finale, 
after this really fun scene where he's like there's trees and he's blowing the shit out of them with a shotgun and throwing grenades and there's a big one and he throws a grenade and it blows up and one thing leads to another doing this doing that just knocked out just tied up and some of these long at the beginning of the film and during low patches throughout the middle of the film and at the end of the film these long patches of exposition which I'll get into that when I talk about the script exposition that goes on for what feels like forever on what's going on and what's happening what's going to happen and once in a while the the main bad guy you just hear like on a radio or something and then one of his henchmen just bashing the lead guy's hand which again the effects are well done I will say very well done and the music well done in the movie throughout the film but he escapes and then it's kinda like the final boss like the final level of a video game where this thing this she demon thing that if you see the cover for this, I think it's the one that's on the cover of the the DVD and stuff. If you see the cover on IMDb and stuff, I believe it is. Who can like spit fire? Like the guy's like trying to get away, and it's places of being on fire, and he's trying to sneak around, sneaking and sneaking. Ultimately, shoots it in the face, but then gets back up. The guy gets knocked out again, tied up again. And another long, what felt like 10 minutes of exposition about, oh, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to find your wife and kill her. And then the our lead is like, fuck you, I'll fucking kill you, fuck you. And then the door blasts open, and the henchman gets on fire and shit. And then the thing turns towards the camera and goes right forward. And then it ends. And I'm like, so I'm sure I'm led to assume that I guess the guy died. So even though it's not that I should say I like the guy because the lead guy, <laughs> maybe he was a better actor. Better voice actor, but it kind of really a, a limp dit finale like you have all this action going on in the middle and splatter action and splatter gore and guts and then the ending is kind of just really falls flat it's not even an ending to me I'm like this is an ending the guy sneaking around thinks he killed it then it feels like 10 minutes of exposition of what the this guy on the radio is going to do he's going to do to this guy's wife going to do to this and go do to that and then just for the demon to kill the henchman then turn and come towards, and like one person says, if I don't see them dead, am, sh should I really believe that they're dead? If I didn't see them die, you know, there's always room for a sequel. But for what I understand, there's no sequel or anything in the words. So I'm like, I guess I'm supposed to assume that he's dead, but we never saw him die. We never got the notion that he was dead. But I guess we're just like, it just seemed like not even an ending. It just, if this was an ending to a video game, I would be pissed off. In fact, it reminds me of that fucking ending for Apocalypse with Bruce Willis. Where you think you win, and then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute, I'm possessed now? Because you play Bruce Willis's character. I'm possessed now? What the fuck? And then the movie ends, I'm like, it's not even an I mean, the game ends, I'm like, it's not even an ending because I don't know what the fuck's going on. And it's a shitty ending. It's a shitty ending that when I that's the kind of ending that just makes you go, you know what? I don't need to see this fucking movie again. Cause what's the fucking point? He's going through all this shit, shooting all these things, just to go to his limp wristed uh boring finale where exposition for what feels like 10 minutes and the bad guy's going to do this, this, and this, which it doesn't fucking matter because the monster's going to come in and that bad guy on the radio is never going to get his comeuppance and the lead guy, we're led to assume that he's dead, but we never really saw it, so... It is... And it's not even that exciting and... That's a big problem. It really... 
it shot its load early, and then it was limp for the finale, and <coughs> it's a shitty ending. And then the third thing, like it's a, I, I know you don't give a fuck about the script in this type of film, I know. But there's shit that just doesn't make sense to me. First off, the plot, despite all the times that it stopped to, for exposition, I couldn't fucking tell you what the plot is to the movie. I know it has something to do with, they hired this hitman to kill these two people, and then the hitman, uh, they, he had to kill these two people a certain way by, you know, bashing their brains in, pulling it out, cutting their guts, cutting their stomach open, ripping their guts out, to not have them talk. So I'm like, okay, is this part of a ritual or something? The guy does it to one, but can't do it to the other. Pute, which I didn't need to see our lead pute. Come on. And then the, the guy who owns the hotel is pissed off that he didn't finish the job. So now he has everyone coming for him. It's like, I, we need, you needed to do it that way because that way you, they can suffer more. Because it feeds this, this chi demon that this guy likes to collect stuff. And there's a balance, and uh, you know the more people suffer, the more it feeds. And that like some of these people, the reason that they're falling apart is because the more it feeds, the more it feeds on you. And this is what I'm talking about. Like this shit was boring. This shit was boring. The fucking exposition was boring. It's like it stopped dead in its tracks when this happened. I'm like. Can you just move on so that the lead guy can smash something again and, you know, get some more, just move on to the action, please? Shit like this, that, like, the fucking opening is really hard to sit through the opening of the film. I mean, the first shot you see someone get their throat cut in the bathtub and it's really grisly, it's really grisly. And then you find out what that scene's about in the, about ten minutes into the film. But, you know, when you're watching the beginning, I'm like, oh, shit, because the voice acting's terrible, and the exposition is... And then, like, the guy, the lead guy gets these glasses. But if you think these glasses are going to come into play for the rest of the film, uh, you'd be mistaken like I was. <laughs> because these glasses, they come up with, like, this, like, a HUD system. It was funny. They... They didn't fucking pay attention when they did this film in this instance. Okay. How do I do this? You're watching this, right? You, you're watching this on your screen right now. Now, what is this here for you? For you, you look at that and that's the right hand. Right? When you're looking, this is the left hand of your screen. Correct? Now, there's information on the right side of this guy's screen, like here, like little information. And I shit you not, the guy who is talking to him, who's gonna, he, who he finds out it was the main bad guy, tells him all the information that is reading up is on the left side. Now, this is the left side. There's nothing on the left side. The left side is clear as day. Everything is on the right side. Numbers. But the voice clearly enunciates. All the information we're reading is on the left side. And I'm thinking, no. It's on the right side. You don't know your left from your right? <laughs> and then these glasses he gets in and pretty much all the glasses do is able to show him footage of this person who which is the first thing you see in the movie being killed and showing him footage and the guy talking to him going I needed to show you this footage because the people who you're going after are killers, and this is what one of their victims were, and this is what they did to him, and they filmed that, 
Now you go in there and do your business. But when he does, he bashes one's head in. Again, very grisly. Then practical, definite splatter film. Then realizes something's up and something's not right and these aren't quite human. Or 100% human. And then takes the glasses off. And this is probably, again, 10, 15 minutes to the movie at most. And the glasses, they're completely forgotten. So all this, all this shit about the glasses, building up with these glasses, thrown away for the rest of the film. Same with, you know, they feed this information to us, the audience, about how uh, this thing, the she thing, feeds on you. And, you know, these people are deformed. These people are deforming and, you know, the, the, the like deadites. And once in a while, the guy, not in the hand that he was stabbed in, but his other hand, starts, like, doing this, and you see him doing this, and, and doing this, and you're like, okay, is he being affected by it? Is he being fed on? And throughout the film, you hear this talk of, you know, they, they really feed on someone who, you know, has been through a lot, has been through a lot, you know, seen a lot of horror, I'm like, okay, so this is really going to lead to the lead guy because he's seen all this horror. But they don't do anything with it. They just, at the end, it's like, you were supposed to kill those two, you didn't, and you were fucking things up, and we got you, you know, we're fucking up your hand, and she's going to come in. And they didn't really do much with it. I mean, you, I think you could have done a lot more with that, but you kind of, again, the ending is very limp dick. So that's why I was for, for me, it was worth the watch. I'm glad I saw it once. It was fun to see this concept used for a whole film. It was fun to see these Peter Jackson type splatter effects. Because it's, again, not every day that you see this kind of stuff. At least nowadays. <laughs> and uh, some fun action stuff. And really good soundtrack. I really, really like, I love the soundtrack to the film. But again, if you remade this film, kept the effects. When I say remake the film, it could still be a film that goes direct to DVD. Because when films go direct to DVD, it seems like they have more leniency to what they can show. than if you go into theaters. I don't know that's just how it is a lot of times it seems. Because <coughs> I've seen a lot of gorier films go direct to DVD nowadays than stuff that goes in theaters. Including this one. You s but have better keep the soundtrack, keep the gore, keep the idea because I think those and keep the action bits like the shotgun bits and you know taking the chainsaw away when he's like found this sort of secret not pathway but the secret area again sort of the video game vibe like he even gets this map can kind of like a video game but it's where he gets the map and then he, the map is never used again I don't remember him. He got a map. I think he like tossed it away or something. I'm like, what was the point of that then? I mean, maybe to find one or two things, but why didn't he keep the map? I mean, anyway. This is the same thing that doesn't know their left from the right. Oh, the information is on the left hand of the screen, even though it's over here on the right hand of the screen. But the reason it's not a rant is because I... I'm glad I saw it once. I am. I'm glad I saw it once. I like the idea, the soundtrack, the action bits, and the splatter, practical gore. But keep those and keep the soundtrack. <coughs> but get better voice actors. Work. Even if you want the script to have all that stuff, fine. At least do these two things. Get better voice actors and have a much better ending. 
Hell, you could have put the ending like you have like that scene in Doom, the movie in Doom. <coughs> where the guy escapes and he's gotta go through this long, arduous journey for your epic finale where he's gotta go down steps and this one, this one, this one, boom, 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 boom. Left and right, left and right and center. I don't know why, it makes me think of that scene in uh, Tony Jaws, The Protector, was it? Was that the one where it's like one lawn scene where he's like kicking everyone's ass like up it, up this fucking stairs and stuff? You could do that, but with this, just going down the hallway, boom, boom, boom. Fucking this guy up, fucking this dead eye up. And then get into the main finale. Not that he's going to make it, but boom, 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 boom. You know, getting chainsaws, using everything in this, everything at his disposal, blow the the fucker up. Say, ah, motherfucker, boom, get out of there. And uh, you know, you have Michael Bean or someone like that voice it. Man, you got a A plus movie, even with all those flaws in the script. Like I said. I would let those go because I'd be having so much fun if you had better voice acting and a better ending, not this limp-wristed, shitty ending. But because it has that, I would have given it two and a half, but I, I, I like the good stuff. I would give like a three out of five stars. I mean, I rarely do star reviews, but if you can find it, see it once... On the other hand, I have no idea how you're going to see it unless you buy it from the website. Because I was lucky enough to do that. A friend of mine be able to see it. You guys might not be that lucky to know someone with that. So, it'd be up to you. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I would... If this was somehow on Amazon or eBay for like five bucks <coughs> with the soundtrack and stuff, but you never don't find it on there, you again it's got me on their website, so that's why that's that's up to you. How what I've said during this thirty minutes and the trailer, how much it really entices you. But again, I I'm glad I saw it once, but at the same time, the ending and the voice acting, I mean, yeah, some of the little script things, but especially the voice acting, and I say voice acting because you don't see anyone talk. Is it on a phone or on speakers or the lead guy, which you never see his mouth move? Yeah, that's supposed to be well. It's like video games. Video games are bad. No, don't do that. Okay, you don't need to do that route. Video game voice acting is bad. You don't need to do that route. And I've heard video game voice acting that was good. Hell, even Bruce Campbell in the Evil Dead games. Some of them, he's the best part of those games, and it's his voice acting. <coughs> but uh, hell, even if Bruce Campbell did the voice and lead voice in this movie, I'd be fine with. Because the guy in real life may seem like an asshole, but, you know, I don't mind him in movies like Moon Trap and, you know, Evil Dead 1 and 2 and Army of Darkness and stuff. But, anyway, I'm going on long enough. It's over 30 minutes, but it's up to you. But I just wanted to give my thoughts on this film. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.